Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets rang the bombs bursting in air. Good evening, all. Thanks so much for being with us here for our League of Legends game. We've got Shawnee State tonight, so the Eagles will be playing the Bears. And looking forward to them getting started here in just a second. So, for those of you who have not been following the team so far, um, it looks like we're going to be... This is the fifth game of the season. So... We're going to be playing tonight, and then we have one more game tomorrow night. So. That's going to be it for the season. We only have the two games left, and if we can pull out a win tonight and a win tomorrow, there is a good chance that we wind up in the playoffs and may have some more League of Legends for you right here with Faulkner Esports. So, of course, we're hoping that that happens, and then the playoffs would proceed, I believe. Not that right next week, but the week directly afterwards. So, it's a little bit different this season because they're actually using a third-party source. NACE is hosting, but they're not hosting in the way that they traditionally do. This is technically an invitational. And so their season is being run a little bit differently than they normally do. So we're going to see the results of that probably in the next week. And I believe it is the, the week after that that they would be playing games if they get that. So. We're winding down. This is going to be the last couple games of the regular season, and hopefully we have a playoff appearance. And if that happens, it'll be, you know, hopefully like last year where we wind up going all the way to the championship game. Of course, we wound up losing to Seneca in that last game, but there is a, a chance that we could wind up winning a championship again this year. It hasn't uh, been the kind of season that we wanted to so far, but we can turn that around very quickly if we can get a win tonight and a win tomorrow. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and while the guys are getting uh, busy getting set up, we're going to go ahead and introduce the team. So you'll see over here, there on the far side, right under the Registar USA High Res Arena sign, you've got Raptor Claw, Ethan Dixon. So he is over there and getting ready. He typically is playing Jungle Forest, and I assume that that's the role that he's going to be playing tonight. So we've got him. Uh, playing this evening looking forward to him being able to do that and then of course here on the other side we've got oh our camera's slightly off position that's strange um sorry about that there we go all right so there on the far left you've got methodical melody or steven patterson so he is typically our well, actually, he's played a lot of different positions. I've seen him play top. I've seen him play bottom. Uh, he's just kind of an all-around player. And then over there on the right tonight, we got Zane Thrash, Mr. Gunk, who's going to be filling in for us. Seth was not able to make it, so we got Zane, and we really appreciate him being nice enough to fill in. He was on the team last year. He got moved to an alt this year, uh, you know, just because, frankly, he was busy with the Overwatch team and... Uh, wanted to really focus in more on that. So we certainly understand that, but we appreciate him 
being willing to come in and fill out in Seth's absence. It's actually kind of funny. I was talking to one of the teammates earlier. I was like, you know, technically Zane is not on the team anymore, which is kind of funny when you consider that despite that fact, he has actually played in approximately half of the games. So, I don't know, just strikes me as kind of funny that way. Whoa, oh, sorry. I don't know why we switched from that. Uh, but anyway, so that's Zane and Steven over there. And if we can go ahead and check out what else we got going on here. Uh, we have... Yeah. There he is now. Uh, he's kind of off by himself. He's not actually in the arena tonight, but we got Charlie Greet here this evening, so you can see him. Let me see if I... Yeah, waving at the camera there. Um, so Charlie, he's in a little bit of a different situation. He, like me, is having some bad allergy problems uh, because the people at Faulkner think, ah, college students, you know what they love? Short grass, so we're going to cut it every day. And <laughs> it just really messes with him. And uh, he's just doing a little bit better in this room tonight. So he's actually going to be in the practice area with me tonight, but he is playing. So Charlie Greet, otherwise known as Frisbee Meniscus, he's going to be in the arena with me this evening, and he'll be playing here in just a minute. So the guys are going ahead and getting queued up, and I'm sure they'll be picking their champions and their bands here in short order. So hopefully we'll be able to see that pretty quickly. Um, will be nice to see if they can uh, go ahead and get that underway. You know, it, it is the way that it is every year that with uh, League of Legends, it always just takes a little bit longer and that's because it's a, a little bit slower game it's a little bit more uh deliberate and the thing about it is it's also a thinking man's game so league of legends not to say that there's not a whole lot of strategy going on with all of our games because there certainly is but it's just it's one that is a lot more cerebral and a lot more strategy oriented so the way that I explain it to people that ask me about it is this. If you were to think about these different games as board games, you have some that are very flashy, you have some that are very action-based, like, you know, your Rocket League, which is a very action-based, team-oriented game, that one would be a lot more like something that you would see like a party game. Uh, whereas you look at League of Legends, that's really more like chess. So, you know, if you're thinking about Rocket League, that would be more like Cranium, something like that, something goofy and zany and something that, of course, there are some people that are more skilled at it than others, but, but everybody can understand the concept of it really well. Like, you don't have to be a Rocket League fan to watch a Rocket League match and understand exactly what's going on. It's two teams trying to get the ball into the goal. League of Legends is much more nuanced. It's much more... Strategic, you have to understand more aspects of the, the base game and the meta game to really appreciate what's going on. Uh, in sports terms, it's almost more like baseball or something like that, to where, uh, sure, anybody can watch baseball and still have fun, but somebody that really understands baseball, that understands the duel that's going on in the mind between the pitcher and the catcher, uh, the person that understands the subtle nuances of moving around in the field and the shift and, uh, you know, what the strategy would be and doing an intentional walk or doing a sacrifice fly, that kind of thing. Those are the people that are really getting a lot out of the game. And so it's the same thing with the League of Legends. You just have to really be on top of things. So it looks like they are uh, picking some stuff right now. Uh, I think they're actually in the ban engine, so let's see if we can get a glimpse into what they're doing over there. Yeah, there we go. So, you do gotta be, like, timing that whoop. real good, though. So. Sorry, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but this is a matchup I've played, like, 100. That that was weird. Um, I think we were getting a, a little bit of their calm bleed over. I'm not sure why that happened. I'll need to look into that. Uh, but, nonetheless... It looks like they've got their champions already picked and they're doing a loadout right now, so that's good. And it means that we should be getting into the action here in just a couple minutes. And let's see, can I actually see? Yeah, we've got 
Pantheon, Zach, Lux, Misfortune, and Karma on one side. Oh, and it looks like we're going to go ahead and, and they're getting their loadout ready now. So that means that I should be able to jump in here in just a second. Yep. All right, so I have the timer up for spectator mode. We do have a three-minute delay because this is competitive League of Legends, which means there is a three-minute de delay to avoid any cheating or anything like that, which, you know, of course, we appreciate. So we are currently on spectator mode, and I can go ahead and give you the breakdown of our team, at least. I can't give you the breakdown for the other team. I think, actually, the, yeah, the names that I just called out, that is the breakdown for the other team. So on our side, we have Methodical Melody playing Scion. We have Diana playing Raptor Claw. Uh, or, sorry, Raptor Claw playing Diana. Got that one backwards. Uh, Mr. Gunk's going to be playing as Jin, so that's fun. We've actually seen him play Jin in the past, so... That'll be fun to get, uh, get to see him reprise his role playing Jin this evening. Uh, we have Le uh, Mr. One-Shot, the captain, Daniel, playing LeBlanc. And then we've got Frisbee playing Morgana. So, going to go ahead and get this down. By the way, did want to mention something while we're waiting here. I actually just got an interview with our sponsor for our upcoming live stream, which I'm really looking forward to. And it's going to be to benefit Operation Underground Railroad, which is a fantastic charity that helps fight child trafficking worldwide. He was just telling me a story. I don't want to give away any spoilers because I did just do the interview and we'll be debuting it on the night of the live stream. But did just do an interview with him, and one of the things that he mentioned that was really cool is that they actually were able to stop a child sex trafficking ring that was going out of Ukraine and wound up in Ecuador. And so they are a global organization that fights this thing wherever it occurs, so really cool to be able to talk to them. We'll be doing a live stream to raise money for them. That's going to be coming up, not this Friday, but the next Friday, so... Uh, the Friday directly preceding this one. So in one week, April 21st, we have that coming up. Be sure to check that out. And uh, if you can, give a little donation. Help these guys out. They're really uh, doing the best that they can to help with a very worthy cause, helping out little kids. All right, so we're going to go ahead and switch and see if we can get this in. There we go. All right, so you can see there the lineups that we've got. We already mentioned the lineup that we've got on our side. Um, but on the other side, we've got uh, Top Diff with Atrion. I've never actually seen... I've never seen Atrion before. Okay, so here we go. We're underway. Got it started. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. Thirty seconds into Union Storm. Minion 
Guys, sorry about that. I had to go radio silent for just a second, but that's because we have Seth Dawson, who actually just came back from his practice. So we are glad that um, Zane was able to fill in for him because he wouldn't have been here at the start of practice and we would have had to forfeit the game. But he's actually here to do commentary for one of the games this evening. Welcome in, Seth. Hello. Glad I can be here. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Just came in from... I guess y'all don't have a camera, so you can't see me. I'm all dressed up. Just came in from a performance for the Board of Trustees, actually. Yeah, um, you're with the Faulkner Singers, correct? Yep. Whew, literally ran here. A little on the tired side, but whew, looking forward to seeing how this game goes. Yeah, well, they just started, so you, nobody's missed much. Yeah, I, um, saw the, uh, I saw the game loading in as I walked in. Oh, looks like we're currently looking at, uh, ooh, we got Methodical Melody in the top lane, also known as, uh, Steven, and Mr. Gunk as the ADC. So, Steven, great top, uh, great top laner. He's playing Scion in the top lane. Really good top laner right now. Uh, really, really big AoE attack that just stunned forever. Really tanky as well. Of course, he's playing against a Pantheon, who is, there's that big AoE I was talking about. Really big damage just punking there unfortunately still losing out that trade to the pantheon pantheon a pantheon a really strong top laner especially in the early game uh, but uh if there's anyone i know who can uh bring it back definitely steven steven a really really strong player especially in top lane looks like we're looking at mr one shot just avoided getting ganked in the mid lane Mr. Gunk and Frisbee in the bot lane, uh, playing Jin and Morgana. Really strong pair co combination. Both of them have really good stuns. Morgana, really good uh, if you can hit those Qs, just really long range and stuns them forever. Also can drop that pool of acid right there. I don't really know what exactly it is. I just call it pool of acid because it just damages over time. So it's like a poison effect. Yeah, it's like just a poison cloud. Although, they're having a really hard time dealing with, uh, the poked of, uh, uh, I can't remember the name of the character. Can't remember. Uh, I can't remember. I think it's, like, Karma and... Who, whose character? Uh, the support, uh, Pillow Destiny. Pillow Destiny is Karma, and the other one, I'm trying to remember the name of the char character. It's just uh, Misfortune. Misfortune. Yeah, it's Misfortune. And then Doing Milligem really is Lux, I believe. Uh, yes. So the opposing mid laner is Lux, a really, really strong uh, poke character. Generally, I play Lux on as support, mm -hmm. but Lux mid lane is still a really strong pick. Really good at. Uh, has a very similar. Q ability to Morgana and that right there as you can see she can just stun them down right and she can also throw out an area of effect E which you can activate which will just sit there for any amount of time but you can activate by just recasting to, uh, to blow up an area essentially also as we can see in there that huge AOE is just so much larger than you expect it to be doing a really good job pushing fail uh yeah uh, Pantheon out of lane so that he can uh you, you really that. hate not being able to get that kill, but at the same time, like, you can't be upset with our top lane performance there, just pushing him all yeah. the way back to his turret and forcing him to have to go back. Because right now, Scion's currently holding them right in front of his turret. What he's trying to do is just deny Pantheon uh, XP, and right now he's denying him, like, a full wave and a half if he can get uh, his own wave killed, really, before Pantheon gets back. Uh, it looks like uh, we're looking at the mid lane. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, this is bot lane. Yeah, now we're now we're over to bot lane. Our bot lane seems to be struggling just a little bit. Mr. Gunk playing the uh, Mr. Gunk playing Jin in the bot lane. Really, really strong player, but having trouble dealing with that poke. Methodical melody uh, in the top lane. Just having trouble dealing with just the oppressive power of uh, uh, Pantheon. Just constantly going back and forth. They're, they're both just forcing the other to constantly retreat every time they come back to the lane. To 
So is Pantheon like a good early gamer, or is it just overall or good or good all around? I'd say he's pretty good all around, but I'd say he's probably the best in the early game from what I understand mm -hmm. of the character. I think Zion possibly outscales, but at the same time, I'm not sure. Unless you're one shot, possibly being able to... Uh, Oh, no. Okay. No, luck. Well, luck. The gets mid rescued. lane luck and the opposing coming in to save uh, the their jungler, Zach. Mr. One Shot still just doing amazing spacing and just keeping them off them. Yeah, it's a shame here because it looks like we outnumber them, but almost everybody is at a low yeah. HP, and then, of course, they get the kill off of our jungler on Raptor Claw. Really unfortunate, but. Uh, our top laner, Methodical Melody, taking this opportunity to go in, get some plating, getting himself some gold. We're actually at the exact same gold. We're actually slight. No, it's, we're, uh, the goal is exact. The gold for each team is exactly the same. Um, and the kills are almost identical. Although I had to open my mouth. Um. So Scion has an interesting ability. Like on death, he respawns as like a really fast menace that loses health over time. So he can kind of clean up the clean up the opponent if he uh, dies. Got to be really careful here. Karma and misfortune just trying to bully Jin out of it, getting his CS in the bot lane. Our mid laner having trouble trouble dealing with uh, luck. Although luck is running low on mana, so it might be the time to push. Because look, look. Let look like he might be trying to back up to get some more mana. Although Jack is currently going to try and gank the mid lane. Although with how pushed up the wave is, I don't know if he'll be able to. All right, now I can get to where we're actually looking at. <laughs> right, trying to keep up with everything that's happening. Uh, really good uh, little. Ooh, what's happening here? So our jungler and our top laner are working together to try and take out, possibly get a kill on this pantheon. Luck came in to try and help here. Uh, Raptor has to be really careful, uh, the Phalanx doing a good job of just trying to focus down Raptor Claw as he knows he can't really deal that much damage to Scion, but can burst the jungler a lot easier. Morgana almost walking into a trap there. Ooh. Unfortunately, uh, Mr. Gunk gets taken out by the Misfortune ult. See. Right, looks so like uh, Scion up in the top lane able to get another good plate. Mm -hmm. Every one of those plates provides you with a certain amount of gold, and the more you can get, the better. It can really snowball if you're able to take out all of those plates. Right, and you can see that too, gold. that Faulkner is almost at even gold. Uh, not at a huge disadvantage, despite the fact being at a, a pretty substantial... Show me Really, really nice pick pickup there by Mr. Gunk. Mm -hmm. uh, good kill, really catching and getting himself a good amount of gold. I don't think it was a shutdown, but still get them 300 gold. 300 gold is 300 gold. Medical Melody. Dion is generally a very strong character in the early game, but Pantheon is just such a lane bully uh, that it's hard to really compete because he has that the one big thing with uh, Scion is he can release that huge AoE attack but Pantheon actually has ability that blocks all damage from a certain direct so, so if he's able, if he uses that ability while he's using that big hit, it just does enough, so so Scion's probably a little bit better at minion control than actually fighting PvP. No, he's really good PvP. It's just uh, uh, Pantheon is a pretty good counter to him. Gotcha. Speaking gotcha. of which, Pantheon has that uh, universal or a global ultimate, as we call it, which literally allows him to just fly in from any, to any point on the map, as you saw him do in the mid lane. I was able to pick up the kill on our jungler. Although we did still get a kill on their mid laner, I believe. Right. No, it wasn't their mid laner. Oh. 
bot lane continually hard pushing our current our, i will say as much as the opposing team has been like trying to just hard push the current into our current our team has done a really good job of denying uh the plate to the opposing team methodical melody having to stay very careful here he is a level down from pantheon so he can't really afford to trade too much although pantheon is really low on uh mana so if he le if he pushes him to keep using his mana he won't be able to Pan he'll have the advantage over pantheon and that pantheon literally won't be able to do anything mm -hmm. uh mid lane luck doing a really good job putting up and taking some taking half plate uh leblanc our mid laner mr one shot uh coming in to push him off the current One thing I will say, um, Methodical Melody has consistently been able to take advantage of when Pantheon back to be able, able to just come up and grab a, essentially just a whole plate for almost free. And right there we saw that last hit, he was yep. able to get the gold from that plating. Uh, I don't know how much gold he has, don't really have a way to tell, but gold equals power. <laughs> Really and truly. Uh, it looks like Thion top lane is, might be building towards a heart steal. I actually don't know. Uh, I'm trying to look at the item. It looks like if we can get a good cut down on Pantheon, he's worth 400 gold. Yeah, so a good bounty on him. He's currently 4 0. He has over half, half the opposing team kills, though. So. Pantheon is kind of the one to fear right now. Along with uh, Misfortune. Let's see. A lot of Ooh, nice hand. root there. Yeah. Good root there. Probably saved them from a little bit of poke, although can't really take full advantage of it. They got four people in the mid lane. Really good. Oh, and the Rift oh. Herald. Yeah, this is not looking good. Yeah, very possibly losing our current in the bot lane. Some of our guys coming in. Really good shut down. Shut down? Shut down on the Misfortune. Uh, literally the entire opposing team is here, though. If... Uh, but the Pantheon really coming in and cleaning up our guys, unfortunately. Dion coming in, though. Able to push Pantheon off. Did miss there with his ult, but was able to push him off. And looked like we might be able to pick up the KO on Pantheon. Oh, not yet. Come on, get him. Get oh. him. So oh, low. man, so close. So low, but not quite. Um, unfortunately, we don't. It, maybe he can cut him off here. Uh, well, if Sign's able to come back in. Nope, never mind. He got slowed. No. That was really unfortunate. We couldn't pick up the KO there. That would have been game changing. To be yeah, able to get the really KO could have put Faulkner in a good spot, but unfortunately, but the Pantheon, not able to do really that. good passing, dodging all of these stun abilities. Was just able to uh, keep himself from getting killed. Looks like uh, both teams trying to position for Dragon. Um, looks like, at least by wave control, the opposing team is has most of their lanes pushed up and are better set to try and go after the Dragon. Uh, it all the Wave control can tell you a lot about how a game's going to go. Certain, something I've been trying to learn a lot recently. Uh, looks like Jin has rotated to m help with the... Our bot laners have rotated to mid. While LeBlanc or, uh, or Mr. One Shot has rotated to the bottom. So. Speaking of which, our mid. 
Jin and Morgana have to be really careful. Really unfortunate kill there on Morgana. All right, a but double team it looks here. Like we might finally have a chance to take out this. There, there you it go. Is. And it was Whew. our jungler, the guy. That's really good. That was like a eight hundred fifty dollar bounty. That was great. Um, really evening out the gold a lot from where it was. Especially on our jungler. Uh oh. Oh, the game paused. What? That's weird. Don't know what happened there. Uh, I don't know. I was trying to look at the chat. They, the opposing team, just asked everything good. You hear that? I'm not sure what just happened there. Yeah. Um, okay, okay so, so, yeah, Frisbee was, it actually was lucky that Frisbee was in here tonight, uh, so he actually just informed us that the Captain Daniel is having some connectivity issues, he's playing remotely tonight, and he had to restart his computer, so we're just going to kind of be here in the holding pattern until we know more about what that's going to look like, but I tell you what, since we do have a pause in the action here, Seth, uh, why don't you go ahead and give us a evaluation of how you think the game's going so far and like maybe some of the things that the team is going to need to be able to do to make this work. All right. Well, at right now, uh, the score is a little deceptive. We are 6 to 12 in kills right now. So they literally have double the amount of kills that we do. Mm -hmm. And they have gotten two objectives that we haven't including a tower and the Rift Herald. But we have managed to stay relatively co close in uh, gold, only being about 2,500 gold down, mm -hmm. which is a lot, but isn't enough to seal the game. So if we can kind of, So we still have the opportunity to kind of claw our way back. Um, we have to... Hmm, let's see. They're... Bot lane is the one we probably have to be most careful with as they're as they since they've destroyed our bottom turret, uh they have they have the opportunity to roam to mid especially a lot more often and possibly take kills on our on whoever's in mid at, which is what we saw a second ago. So what we have to do is just be really cautious of our bot laners and honestly we kind of just have to play a little safe. Right. So, Hello. yeah, hey, I was able to get you on camera. Not the, not our usual setup, but, you know, uh, we weren't expecting Seth to be here so early. But uh, one thing that I have noticed that I think does give me a little cause for concern is it seems like we're doing fine on top lane. And part of that is because their top laner keeps sort of just taking off other places mm -hmm. to gank. Um, so is that something that do you think maybe Shawnee is going to regret later on? Is that something that Faulkner can punish them for kind of leaving top lane a little bit open? Very, very possibly. And it actually, we have been this whole time as you, uh, if you, and it's what, uh, our top laner, uh, Mr. One, Shot? no, the methodical melody who's right. playing son has been, has taken every advantage he can. Every time Pantheon's gone, he hard shoves the wave. And get almost a, almost a full plate or a full plate uh, every time. And now has their current one really low. And also he's been able to get a lot of gold off. So he's very close to finishing his item. Would have been really great if he'd been able to finish it earlier. But unfortunately he has lost out on C some CS. Due to uh, also trying to move around a bit and help where he can. But it's hard to... Uh, it's hard to do better than Pantheon of that with Pantheon's global to just jump anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but he has been doing a really oh, good job. Oh, it looks like the uh, game's back, so we're actually going to close. jump back Alrighty. Uh, on that. There we go. 
Oh, and right as I was talking about, there we can see Methodic Ability was able to take out the top lane turret. Probably going to be able to back up and uh, complete his first item. Well, that's bizarre. As soon as I say something about that, the game freezes up again. I don't know. Uh, if... It's doing that because it's waiting for us to get about three minutes behind. Oh, okay. I so think. it's just basically catching up. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, Rise, I say that. You can see that uh, Scion, our top lane, is currently backing to uh, buy his item. Let's see, Luck going around trying to catch Morgana off card. Morgana doing a decent job of just kind of keeping the Luck back, poking her out. Can't win a fight with Luck. Uh, as two levels behind, and I'm pretty sure Luck has her item, but... Uh... Big Jin ult here, but... Uh... Not really able to use it for a ton, as the opposing team... Able to come in and shield Luck. Uh, who was the only person who was really low there. Although, good done there on the Karma. Sion has, hopefully Sion's watching the map, uh, as he'll be able to see literally the everyone down there at Rift Herald. All right, now trying for a steal with Rift Herald. Uh, got a good, got a good kill there, but unfortunately, uh, Miss Fortune had her ult up. Our support player trying to come in and help. Unfortunately, Pantheon still able to come in and get the triple kill there. Really unfortunate. Maybe Scion can come in and do some damage to them. No. Nope. Uh, nope. Timed out. But. Uh, unfortunate there. They're probably going to get the Rift Herald, but not much to do. But maybe we can take advantage of them being gone to. Yep, right there. Killing the Luck. Really good kill there. Um, anything we do to try and keep up with money is great. And as you notice, we're actually still not too far behind in gold. Only about, it's about the same, about 3k now. We've fallen behind a little bit, but... Oh no! Jin just barely not able to, uh... Aw, oh, man. Barely able to not, uh, teleport away before he got there. Yeah, literally a second later and he would have been fine. Mm. Sometimes it's just how it goes. Yep. But. Let's see. Trying to see what. Uh, it looks like they're. Yeah, they're setting up to try and watch the Baron. Make sure we're not going to go for any peak grabs on it. Yeah, and as you can see, their Baron just appeared. So they may go yep. for it. Go ahead, wording it. Keeping an eye on it. Uh, really unfortunate there, uh, Morgana just stepping a little too far up and failing, and, and uh, Pantheon just having that point and click, uh, point and click stun ability, able to jump right on top of Morgana and stun her to death, and hold her in place until he's able to get a kill on her. on having to be really careful here yeah pretty much a vast majority of the whole team right there on him yeah they're and they're gonna use rift herald to try yeah. to take that last one doing everything he can to hopefully try and push this back but unfortunately couldn't stop the rift herald really good uh pick off there from the mid laner I, did he get a kill actually i wasn't sure i didn't you know but i thought he did I don't know. Guess I was wrong. But good, uh, just jump in, poke, and jump out. Able to kill the Rift Herald before it took out our next current. Well, it still did chunk the health a little bit. 
Morgan oh, Frisbee in trouble it. here. I was about to say in trouble, but yep, he was they wind up turning to, it around. Uh, able to take the heat long enough that the other people could kill him. And now we're because Pantheon's down. Uh, we feel comfortable enough that we can go for the dragon. Which right now it looks like we're probably going to get it. Just able to. Oh, ooh, that was close. Yeah. Uh, that had me worried. They had like multiple AOE abilities all come out at the same time to try and uh, deal it with left result and uh, misfortune result. But we were able to get it, and we didn't take too much damage. Uh, Did I see the Jin there side. get a shutdown too? Yeah, Jin got a shutdown. Uh, so right now, Methodical Melody just r honestly really far ahead compared to a lot of the other opponents. So without failing here, they're able to actually win the majority of the team fight just outnumbering them, and uh, our top laner just kind of being able to tank all their hits. But as we noticed, as soon as Phalanx came back, we backed up. Really good call. We really can't fight with Phalanx there right now. We have to be able to just pick him off when he's by himself. Right. So as soon as he showed up, really good call. Just backing up. Uh, playing safe. Uh, and that's really the best thing we could do for is like play safe and to play for the objectives and to play and playing honestly to try and uh, just uh, get some kills on Pantheon whenever we can. The longer we can keep him res in the respawn screen, the better. For sure. Uh, he might actually still be worth gold. I don't know. Is there a way for you to? To pull that up. There we go. Pantheon actually no longer worth any gold after that shutdown. Yeah, it looks like we only have one bounty on but the other team. It looks like we're going to get a good. Yep. Yep. Got it. Really pulling this back to even. Um, in a lot of cases, doing a really good job. Uh, our team's doing a really good job of just finding the finding the kills we can, and we're slowly pulling our way back. Although Morgana. Really far out there. Looks like you might get caught out by the jack. Has to be really careful. Just kind of out of position right now. Not much Morgana can do by herself. So let's see what happens. Able to get out of there uh, and get back with our allies to help. To uh, run, Raptor Claw. No, not able to yeah. get away. Pantheon just really, really strong there. Morgana barely missing that route. Would have been probably a solid kill on Pantheon there. Uh, as we can see, most of our team, yep, right there, just gunning for the Pantheon. Really good call. I think we did lose one person in that, but being able to take out the Pantheon is just so much more important. As we can see, Scion over here just last forever pushing the team back the opposing team back even after death because they have to reach and deal which is quite a bit yeah now Although they're gonna they go for the baron, able to go for the baron. Uh, there's a chance it looks like in might be setting up try use the bolt cost the baron yeah if we could get a steal on the baron Although that would he be doesn't huge notice, he doesn't know that he's ported which yeah unfortunately there was a ward in that bush so Opponent ready there. Or mad came out mad. Although I don't know, Pantheon's coming in, but he might be able to clean up a lot of the rest. Yeah, nice. Okay, so really, really good. Uh, triple kill on the opposing team. Although right now, just trying to Pantheon from demolishing the rest. I'm pretty sure LeBlanc and yeah, LeBlanc nice plus Scion here. We'll if Scion can get up. this one as well, I got away. Yeah, uh, but really good call on the Scion part, realizing that it wasn't going to hit him, so he went ahead and went. Go ahead and getting that card every second out there. 
So, really good call there. Just, uh, why did Zach get so big? I, big? I think he just bought the, uh, he just bought the uh, yellow potion, stone potion. I don't really know what it's called, but it increases your size and mass. And giant Zach kind of looks scary, I'll be honest. Falco Melody has to be careful here, but he's got nice. his allies on to back him up. Really good catch there, getting the Zack before he could jump out. He got a little, got a decent bit of damage on him. So it looks like they're going to go for the yeah, dragon here. Yeah, it looks like here. once again we're going to try and go for dragon here. Uh, Pantheon is alive, so we have to be careful with that. Let's see. Uh, unfortunately, Jin's ultimate was interrupted by Pantheon. But it looks like he might be able... Oh. Hey, we got the dragon. We did get the dragon. We were able to distract the rest of the team long enough that uh, our jungler was able to deal with it. Unfortunately, Pantheon did uh, clean up the rest of our team. Essentially, a lot of our... Well, he was able to... Uh, Eat Jin back enough and was able to get a kill on Jin and one other person. And uh, misfortune and luck kind of cleaned up the rest of our team. But uh, at this point, honestly, if we can get one more dragon, that'll give us soul, which is a really big boost. And honestly, what we probably need to be able to win this game. Yeah, it looks like they're actually going to go for our base here. The question is, can we stave them off long enough to make that? Yeah, really good call on their team. They're probably going to be get... Uh, okay, I was worried they would probably try and go for this inhibitor and probably be able to get it. But if they did try and go for the inhibitor, there's a good chance we could have picked off one of, one or two of them. Uh, especially with LeBlanc there for Mr. One Shot. Yeah, the main problem I'm seeing here is just the gold advantage. Yeah. Especially on Pantheon. Uh, can you pull up the items real quick? Yeah. So, yeah, Pantheon right now actually has... I think he has three completed items. Um, plus his boots, and it's working on his fourth one. Whereas... Uh, most of our team has one or two... But uh, the next closest person would be probably our top laner. I can't quite tell. Yeah, our top laner who is currently working on his third item. Top laner and mid laner, I think. Uh, Jin ulting right here. See if he can possibly try and pick off the Baron, possibly. Nope, uh, they got it. Yeah, unfortunately, Shawnee comes away with Baron there. And able to get several, well, two kills. Really unfortunate. Jin is luckily alive still, and so is Morgana. But is that going to be enough to hold back their team? We need at least another 15 tanks for the next player comes back to life. Really just like, oh, who do we go for here? Right. Uh, they mu they're definitely getting both inhibitors right here, I think. Woo. Luckily, they stalled long enough. Uh, the rest of our team is about to come back. Uh, let's see. Scion just spawned back in, and now LeBlanc spawning back in. Wow, both turrets at the same time. Yeah, losing both turns, but I don't. we might be able to survive this. I don't know. I, uh, I said that, but... Unfortunate uh, defeat there, but yeah, the Baron Nasher being able to yeah. taking that, I think, was the the last nail on the coffin, really. Yeah. So the Baron Nasher gives a lot of buffs, primarily to the minions, but can also buff the. It also gives a slight buff to the players as well, which mm -hmm. we can kind of see that coming in handy there for them being able to get all those minions pushed up and onto our base oh, so even yep. if we've been able to deal with them it 
we would have struggled to uh, deal with the minions. For sure, for sure. Uh, so one of the things I wanted to ask about that is, what adjustments did you see that you think the guys could be able to make to make a big difference in this next round? Um, I don't know what the bans were before this, but one one thing that might happen is they might ban uh, Pantheon for this next game because of just how much trouble he caused the whole game. Uh, Misfortune got really far ahead, and, and Misfortune and Luck were both just dealing a ton of damage, but both of them were pretty squishy. The um, the biggest problem for most of that game w was the Pantheon, right? And just his mobility and his ability to be everywhere he needed to be. Yeah, I think so, if if you're Faulkner, you have to ban Pantheon for this next round. Possibly that, or they might try and make some kind of counter uh, pick to pick a character that essentially just plays better into Pantheon. Um, uh, either could work. I don't know exactly what they would do. Uh. I don't even know what characters the opposing team banned initially. But also, those who don't know, this is the Pseudo's Ring. And the reason I'm all dressed up is uh came, came back from a performance immediately before this. So if you're wondering why the commentary is so well-dressed, that's why. Yeah, I have had to do a few of my commentary spots when I was dressed up for whatever reason. <laughs> Uh, there was one, actually, I thought about doing it today, but I had enough time to switch into one of my League of Legends shirts, but I was wearing a button down because I was doing an interview with what was going to be our charity for this live stream that's coming up next Friday. So I was doing an interview with him and I was dressed up in this button down and I almost just ran straight to the arena after I was <laughs> like, now I have enough time to switch into a t-shirt. So I did. I but yeah, Seth, Seth still have time. <laughs> Seth's still dressed to the nines over there. Oh, I took off my bow tie. Okay, so you did casual it up a bit. Yeah. And didn't you say you have somewhere else to be right after this? Yeah, I have uh, another. This one's not a performance. It's just a practice for. Oh, okay, okay. It'll, yeah, it'll be a practice for our Broadway performance that we're uh, not actually on Broadway, but uh, we're going to be doing a the. Uh, not any particular group, it's just the music program plus some are going are putting on a Broadway musical. I got you, I got you. I was wondering if maybe y'all had another performance and we could plug it here on the air, but I guess not. Uh, we do have another performance coming up soon, and that's going to be okay. this Monday. We're going to be, uh, it's going to be the band performing uh, this, mo this Monday, and we're going to be at the Faulkner Theater right across the street. Uh, and it's going to be, it's going to be the Faulkner Jazz Band, and then also the Faulkner uh, Just Concert Band. We got a huge lineup planned. Well, not huge. Pretty. We have we have quite a few songs picked out ready uh, to put on a good performance that we've been practicing all semester. That we're looking forward to, uh, including one picked by me. Okay, cool. Uh, Which one did you pick? Uh, the one you will see if you go there. Okay. But Leave the was, audience in some suspense. Yeah, and I, I would go ahead and mention we've got uh, Stephen Patterson, who's also a member of the band, who's playing tonight. Exactly. So we do have quite Great. a few esports guys playing in there. We also have Kristen Page, who of course is on the Smash Bros team, so he'll mm -hmm. be there as well. The, the if you join a music program, particularly band, you'll find out the majority of everyone in there is a nerd. <laughs> and right, it's great. We're music nerds, but we're also just classic nerds. Yeah, well, I mean, everybody, and this has been something that I've said for a long time. Everybody's a nerd about something. Exactly. It's just a question of what you're a nerd about. Like, mm -hmm. if you are a big sports guy, you're a sports nerd. Exactly. So, and I, I am. I'm a baseball nerd. So, <laughs> uh, of course, I'm also a video game nerd and a whole bunch of other stuff too. But You're my point kinda, is, you dip your feet into everything. I really am. I'm a Renaissance man. <laughs> uh, I do everything from video games to ancient literature to sports. I, I do a lot of stuff. Jack of all trades. Probably why I'm still single. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so this next game, I think. 
what you're going to see is you're going to see them probably put a lot more pressure on top lane because, I mean, granted, this is just speculation, but it looks like because they didn't pressure it a little bit more, they didn't strike while mm -hmm. the iron was hot, they, they probably could have done actually a fairly similar thing to what actually wound up happening in that game with their top laner, which is uh, because their top laner left yeah. and there was more of an opening, I think maybe if they had been a little bit less reactionary and been able to take top lane, take maybe one more turret, uh, that would have mm -hmm. at least opened up some room and then their top laner or somebody else would have had to go in yeah. and kept a little closer eye on what was going on there, which uh, that would have really handicapped them in a, in a big way, I think. Yeah, excuse me. A little bit of a yawn there. But, uh, yeah, or that is definitely... Yeah, either putting some... So this would probably be mostly on the jungler to do. To either try and pressure top a little more. Hopefully try and keep their top lane from getting so far ahead. Or basically it just be... Can't, is there a single lane which we could really focus down mm -hmm. and force them to back off and lose really hard? Right. Because uh, right. that game, none of our lanes really hard loss except for maybe our bot lane a little bit but that we still kept it relatively even uh keeping we still played uh pretty evenly throughout that we just kind of lost slowly essentially on every lane right um, right if there's something if if we could do the inverse of that on just one lane that probably make that game significantly closer and possibly give us the edge because playing from behind, we still kept it really close to even. We were adjusting to the Pantheon pretty well, and we were uh, taking and the fights we were engaging with. Most of the time, we were able to single out the person we needed to and take them out. Uh, because we really and truly, the biggest two we were we were trying to focus down were Misfortune and the Pantheon. Uh, Pantheon just being so hard to kill, but at the same time dealing so much damage. Yeah, one thing that I noticed, too, is that the Misfortune really came in clutch with several ultimates. It seemed like mm -hmm. every time we were coming close to doing something really good and getting, like, a full team kill or something like that, it seemed like the Misfortune would just pop ult and, and mm -hmm. kind of ruin our chances of that. Misfortune's ult is really, really strong at just covering a single area. It essentially, like, throws out an area of effect. It, it just creates an area in which you just cannot... Uh, interact essentially like, you can't walk in there or you're going to die um, now misfortune's ult is uh, it is possible to interrupt it with stun abilities things like scions uh, big stun ability which knock which knock you up uh, would prevent would stop that ult in its track um, one character I like to play a lot Cho'Gath uh, his Q ability uh, knocks people into the air, and that would that anything like that would interrupt that ult. Um, but it's just being able to do that fast enough before it really causes too much damage, right? And if they do decide to go ahead and ban, then that means that they probably wouldn't need those abilities because that character would be banned anyway. Mm-hmm. Oh, it actually looks like they're going ahead and doing some of their picks and bans, so let's go they ahead and are. take a look in there. All righty. Let's see. Um, I think I'm throwing it. I was trying to see. Can't currently, we're currently, let's see. So, we have banned, or is it, who's, I'm trying to figure out who's who. Oh, I, I, it says it at the back, at the top. Yeah, so... So, so we over have on the right, we're, we're on red. Olaf and H. So apparently those are three of their primary uh, characters. And the opponents have been Malphite, uh, Malphite, Aurelian, Soul, and Vi. So Vi is a character that our jungler has been performing really well with, so that's unfortunate, but not unexpected. Um, right, Raptor Claw pulled... Uh, I think he played Vi in the last match, didn't he? Oh, last week? look at 
And, uh, and he did not play Vi in this in the last match. He was no, no, playing... not not last match. Like the one we just watched. I mean, like oh, you mean last the, the last game the that last we played? Game. Yeah, played. Yeah, uh, yeah, he did. Um, although if you notice right here, uh, I believe that was uh, methodical melody able to uh, come in and pick Morgan Kaiser. Morgan Kaiser being a character, I know he's very, very good with and is able to hard carry a lot of games with him. Morgan Kaiser just being a strong top laner this uh, right now. Yeah, I was actually talking to Steven right before the game started, and he was talking about how he really hoped he could play Morgan Kaiser. That, that was his favorite. So, mm -hmm. Morgan Kaiser is a character I picked up for a little bit, and uh, just so, so much fun to play, honestly. Oh, it looks like they've also banned the Lux. That makes sense. I it's a I find it interesting we didn't ban Pantheon, but yeah, that's apparently really okay, surprising. I see why because we banned Jack. Uh, as bad as Pantheon is to deal with, Jack is so much worse. Jack is by far one of the best top laners right now, and just a good Jack player is. Jack is such a good character in both. The early game and late game. In early game, he uh, he's really good at poking if you know what you're doing, because he has his E ability, which blocks all basic attack. Uh, you mm -hmm. just literally can't hurt him with basic attack or auto attack. I think is what they're called in this game. Uh, they banned LeBlanc on us. Really unfortunate. So they banned Diana and LeBlanc. Two characters we were playing last game. So I'm interested to see what character uh, our jungler is going to go. Well, as... I know that he likes Volibear. I could see him going with that one. Uh, maybe. I know he's played it a few times before, but he hasn't really played it consistently. I think it might be more likely he goes with... Uh, I'm trying to remember. Like the, the shadowy black assassin. Like the dark, shadowy assassin who can, like, teleport around the map. It's not Nocturne, is it? It is Nocturne. Nocturne, Nocturne. okay. That's who you're talking about. All right. Maybe. Or, I, I just realized, he probably went Maokai. I just, I just noticed the Maokai. Still kind of blind. Ooh, it looks like they have a Trundle in the top lane. Prob that, yeah, Trundle top lane. Yeah, I don't think so, we've seen a Trundle since last season. Yeah, Trundle, really strong basic attacker. Uh, so it looks like we're gonna have a Milo Zaya in the bottom lane. Morgan Kaiser top, Maokai in the jungle, and Aerie in the mid lane. Aerie, a really strong burst damage, um, mid laner. A burst AP character. Really, really good at just, uh, throwing out a ton of damage all at once. If you, uh, are able to get her, if you're able to land her full combo. Mm -hmm. I'm really interested to see how this goes because she's going to be going against a Ziggs mid lane. Ziggs is an interesting character I don't know a ton about. All I only know is he throws out bombs. Really good at helping position his team. Uh, Zach, one of the premier junglers this uh, right now. So, just really good at coming in and launching himself straight into the middle of a fight and really good at kind of pulling those ganks. Nice. So we went Maokai. Maokai is another really good jungler right now. He... I, I don't know a ton of how he works. I know he can throw like these seedling bombs. They'll just sit there and it works really well for both vision and can also like throw out a decent amount of damage all at once. If you get a few of them stacked on top of each other. Yeah, see, when you start talking about seed bombs, my mind immediately goes to a move that will hit between two <laughs> and five times. Do some grass damage. I have seen five seed bombs go all off, off all at once. And it killed me. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, I was the one that ran into it. It do be sneaky like that. Really cool skin on that Morgan Kaiser, can I say? I love that Morgan Kaiser pin. The Dark Lord. That's what he looks like. It's pretty close to what Morgan Kaiser is. He is literally like a 
he's like an undead death knight kind of thing that rules over a whole land he's like a, he's like the king of death or something like that i i think the lore with warren kaiser is essentially like he was the first person to die found out there wasn't a god of death after death and decided to become one himself <laughs> really i think yeah i think that's how it goes at least that's what i was told at one point how accurate it is i don't know but well as the joker once said you should always have multiple origin stories so no one actually knows which one's true. <laughs> bit of beyond there. Yeah, a little bit. Whoa. Oh, my camera's back on. That's weird. Yes, it is. I don't know what happened there. All right. Let's see. So Milio is the new support character. Uh-huh. Uh, got nerfed a little bit recently after... Uh, got nerfed pretty quickly after he first came out. Uh, but... <laughs> That it doesn't mean he's bad. Uh, he got nerfed from being... He essentially got nerfed from being a completely overpowered character to... Now he's just a really, really good character. Right, so it was a... A measured nerfing. Yeah. If that makes it's, sense. It essentially made him more balanced. It, it made it where he... it He, uh... You could at least play against some Milo and not guarantee lose loss. Uh, but... Milo... So we're going with Zaya. So my, my, uh, Milio's big thing is he heals. He also, every time he uh, gives a buff to an ally, he gives them additional burn damage. So like every hit that you do with uh, when you're being buffed by Milio deals, I think it's something like 76 extra burn damage, which is really strong especially i i don't know how, exactly how it works but it might combo pretty well with zaya who can hit you with a ton of different hits all at the same time i don't know exactly how that works but it might it might stack in combo all right so these are going to be the teams for round two and of course just in case anyone is just now joining us a reminder that shawnee state actually took round one so that means that we're actually going to be uh up against the wall, we have to win the next two matches in order to win this yep. this game tonight. So, uh, you know, Faulkner on the hot seat right now. But and we can bring him back. We have done this before. There have been nights where we lost the first one and just steamrolled the second two. So it can happen. Also, uh, if we can look back at the game. Well, we remember, we're on a delay. Oh, yeah. Never mind. We've got one minute and 50 seconds left. So we will be ready to roll in about 100 seconds. 99 bottles of beer on the wall. 99 yeah, bottles of beer. Da, you take da, one down. Da, 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 da. Anyway. <laughs> Kill time. Hey, throw me some balls. I'll just juggle. You know, that's a character in this game. It's like a really big... He uh, has a giant clock on his back. And he slows you down a ton. And throws out, like, time bombs. Freeze you in place. He can also speed himself up here really fast. Really annoying and difficult to deal with. There's a ball character in Overwatch as well. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. He's a giant hamster... Who runs around in a large ball. I love the sounds of it, honestly. His name's Hammond. He's a tank. I need to play this character. I, I've i never played Overwatch before, but now I need to just play this character. That Honestly, Hammond sounds like he would be a good main <laughs> <Yeah>. for you. <laughs> he fits your personality. Giant ball, rolling ball of death. Oh, since we're speaking of... Games other than League of Legends for a moment. Did you happen to see the new Tears of the Kingdom trailer that dropped today? 
I have seen portions of it, but I have not been able to see the whole thing. I did see we finally got Ganon revealed, confirmed as the new villain, right? Yeah, so, of course, Ganon, and specifically Ganon in his Calamity form, was the boss of the last game, but we have Ganondorf seemingly returning oh, for this yeah, one. Oh, yeah, Ganondorf. That's and so, my... I got the two mixed up. I was thinking Ganon was the human form and Ganondorf was the big form. No, no, no. Wait, how did around. you get that mixed up? You're a Smash player. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't even seem possible. Beyond being a Smash Bros. person, I'm like a huge Zelda fan. <laughs> I know, right? Alrighty, looks like the game is about to start. Well, about there it is starting. I love that Morgan Kaiser skin. It is amazing. I wonder. So this is just something I would do. I wonder if they're going to. We could invade. Morgan Kaiser is a really strong invader. So if we could good, get a good invade and pick off this uh, misfortune right here at the beginning. Henceforth, you shall be known <laughs> as Invader. Until Looks like they're sending in Airy first, since she's the one who has the CC ability. Ah, looks like we just weren't able to, uh, weren't able to really get into it. Unfortunate. Apparently we have an Inkling back there throwing paint bombs. It's, uh, Ziggs. He's throwing, he is throwing bombs. They're just not filled with ink. Just high, high-end explosive. Minions have spawned. Our team go ahead and retreating out of the jungle, taking a little bit more damage than we would have liked. Um, but just essentially ends up kind of neutral to zero. No, no, hey, wins, Seth, no loss. G give me a little bit of insight on this jungler that Raptor Claw is playing because I don't think I've seen him play this one before. So, Maokai, uh, we not the one that's on screen that the opposing team right now, but if it'll ever go back to him. So, Maokai is. A big tree creature. I, I don't know a ton about him myself. Yeah, he actually kind of reminds me of the red buff monster. Um, I don't think he's not related. Yeah, there's there's what I was talking about, the red buff. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember what I know about Maokai. I'll have to tell you when we see more about him. He's and the one who can throw out the seed bombs. Oh, and he also his ult is like a huge area of effect that just travels across essentially the entire screen. Check out that trundle skin. Yeah, That's a is different it the, one. Is it the soccer or baseball one? Or basketball, I mean. Oh, that's not at all what I thought. Yeah, it it's like a giant purple crystal thing. Ooh, Morgan Kaiser. Really, really unlucky there. Trundle being Normally, you don't see Morgan Kaiser really losing early game, but the Trundle just going hyper aggressive, and Morgan Kaiser unfortunately just not really prepared for it, missing the uh, new ability. I'm used to seeing Trundle actually ability. played as a jungler, not as a top laner. Um, I'm trying to think. I think I see him more as a top laner, but I think he, in most of the games you've seen, he is generally played more as a. Uh, jungler because he's he's someone who can do both Ooh, really unfortunate uh, Gank there. Oh, there's Maokai um, Unfortunately not able to help our mid laner there really unfortunate start there Qu two quick um, Kills from the on the opponent's side Yeah, really unfortunate Really hate to see the other side taking an early advantage like that, but, mm -hmm. you know, it is important to remember that that is not necessarily indicative of how the rest of the game will yeah. go. There's plenty of game left to play. Oh, okay, so I don't know if you also saw it, but that circle that uh, Emilio threw out, also, look right here, this is really, really, really good job on our mid laner's ability, uh, mid laner right now. He is down a level from Ziggs. But, um, he is able to, because Ziggs is already at such low life, able to push him back and force him 
uh, back. Now, on in the top lane, Trundle just kind of hard shoving this wave. Morgan Kaiser going in on the Trundle right here. Not able to actually get to him. Maokai coming in to try and get the gank, but uh, the Trundle just being a little too fast to get away. Although, we didn't get to see it, but Maokai and Trundle did almost meet in the river for a second. But Maokai, our jungler right now, just not having anywhere to go, unfortunately, to really help push. Uh, looks like he might be... Okay. Yeah, Mordekaiser just... doing a good job of standing his ground there, but unfortunately mm -hmm. not ac actually able to gain ground. Yeah, although right now he is doing pretty good. Mr. One-Shot doing a really good job here pushing back the other guy, but uh, unfortunately he was open to a gank, which he was just so pushed up. I was something I was bringing about. Uh, but right, I, right as I, I didn't want to say it out loud or... Bring it uh, and thus bring it into existence, but apparently my thoughts were enough. Right, you have to be scared of the Combinator's curse. I get it. <laughs> I live in fear of the Commentator's curse. Morgan Kaiser, honestly, right now doing a pretty good job of just uh, just playing safe, but unfortunately, I have to be really careful here. Uses E to survive the initial. This is okay. Really nice. good shut down there. Can he survive? <laughs> Playing. I was about to say, okay. There's a little unfortunate lag there for a second. Yeah, it turns uh, into a trade, but still, watching him able to just tank two characters like that, especially when their top laner mm -hmm. is getting fed so well, really, really impressive. Really from good Steven. shutdown there uh, for Morden Kaiser. But I'm fortunate that he still died. But. Really good they did get that kill at the very least. So one thing that a uh, really big glowy circle does is that it actually increases the range of the character that's being affected by it. Uh-huh. That allows you to kind of poke a little easier and better, honestly. So have you noticed that and their little. top laner hasn't left top lane very much? Yes, like they've adopted actually... a different strategy? That, that is something I noticed and I was uh, actually thinking of possibly putting out is their top laner is playing a lot more like, well, just a normal average, top laner, a normal top laner and that he's not playing a character that's really going to roam too much. Um, top lane has a tendency to kind of just be separated from the rest of the game for almost the entire laning phase. Uh, yeah, top laners tend to, because they don't have, you get a lot of ganks on mid lane. And then bottom lane, of course, has two characters. So top lane is just kind of both top laners typically are almost playing a tiny game within a game. Yeah. Um, our bot laners have to be careful here. Maokai coming in to try and uh, get a uh, gank on bot lane, but Zach there to interrupt. Mordekaiser got his own hands full with a whole bunch of minions having to deal yeah. with right now. Although, being able to get all that DS, pretty good. Raptor Claw just trying to stay out of uh, the fire, firing range of this um, misfortune and Zack. Yeah, it looks like Shawnee might be going for Dragon here in a second. No, actually, we wind up going for, well, at least for the yeah. ward next to the dragon. Yeah, we weren't going for it. We were just uh, trying to clear out their vision. Right. To kind of force them to always have to try and check on it to see if we're going for it. Right. So both teams seemingly playing much more cautiously than the last game. Mm-hmm. Trundle knowing that Mornkaiser was going to come in there to try and uh, get that cannon. Tr took the opportunity to try and poke him a bit, but 
something I actually hadn't noticed till just now. Uh, Morgan Kaiser is actually up a level oh, on he is. Trundle, and I think that's actually due to the uh, kind of failed gank on uh, where he was able to get the kill on. He's able to get the kill on Trund on Trundle, even though uh, Zach was able to uh, finish off. Even though Zach was able to finish off Mornkaiser, just the split XP from Zach being there during some of those minion kills seems to have oh, allowed Mornkaiser to get ahead. That's his ult, isn't it? Uh, Trundles? No. No, no, no. Mordekaiser, didn't he draw him into his own dimension there? I don't think so, but I'm not sure. I wasn't really paying attention. It's hard to tell. All right, so it looks like Shawnee State going for the dragon, and yeah. probably will get it, barring something drastic. Yeah, Mr. Gunk trying to come in and do something, but wasn't able to. Yeah, just a little bit too late on his part. And now Frisbee in some trouble. He gets targeted. I will say Melio really good for kind of just sustaining the team. All right, we get and one kill. Uh... I about to say, we might be able to get another one here. Looks like it. Yep. Double kill. And if we can just get this full cleanup. Nice. Really good route there. Come on. Get him. Get him. If Milio has his W or uh, where he can. Okay. Yes. He's still able to get it. But it's Zach. So Zach it can respawn if you aren't able to kill all the little portions of him. Oh, I see. Just able to get it, though. Very nice. The team captain coming in with a big win for Faulkner. Uh, it's not actually the team captain. It's Mr. Gunk. Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking Mr. One-Shot. <laughs> Mr. One-Shot's still in the mid lane, although I think Mr. One-Shot was able to pick up a kill in the mid lane, right as you said that. But that was really good, uh, really good at both surviving the gank attempt and coming back and be able to kill and, and make it completely failed and actually putting us ahead in kills. For the yeah. first time in both games. Right. This is the and first Morning time. And Kaiser currently going ham on this trundle. I think he is in within the uh, Morning Kaiser ult. And Malkai coming in and helping uh, clean up that trundle. Yeah, and Raptor Claw with his first kill of this game, I believe. Yeah. But being there right when we needed him. Yep. Really, really uh, good, clean kill. Excellent awareness from the jungler. And it looks like we're going for Rift Herald right now as well, though we can't see that. Uh, uh, I can move it over there. Nah, don't worry about it. Right now, uh, I, we do kind of need to be able to see what's happening down here in the bot lane. Milio really close to dying there. And yeah, okay, it did eventually move back. But Blue wow. Team just barely stole it. But uh, if we can keep them from getting this, uh, Zach is going to be able to get that. Is at the cost of... Uh, their jungler's life, but now that they have the Rift Herald, it'll be really hard to keep them from being able to take a turn, if not it, uh, either take or severely hurt a turn. Yeah, it's a shame too because Faulkner had really had a big momentum swing in their favor, and to be honest, still do, but being yeah. able to take the Rift Herald and get that kill would have been massive. So, really, really, uh, Trundle trying to make something happen there and uh, get some damage on the Mordenkaiser. Although, Mordenkaiser has that full bar of uh, armor that he can just pop at any moment. Essentially giving him a second HP bar for like a few seconds. So he's just a lot, he has a lot more HP left on than he looked like. So Trundle having to respect him and just be aware that he could come in and kill him under current potentially but uh, mid lane has just been kind of a I don't know it's like almost no one's dying in the mid lane but at the same time so many abilities and spells are being thrown out and just so much is happening Oh, right oh, as I Mr. said One -Shot. that. Right as I said that, Mr. One Shot able to take a kill. Hey, and right here, what I was talking about, Morgan Kaiser coming in under current, although may have gone a little too far. Yeah, overextended, really gets shut down. Overextended just a little bit. Uh, unfortunately, just didn't have his ability up. Give him that extra HP. 
and Zach coming in. One reason, this is why Zach is so good, is because even if you have decent vision, he can come in from so far away, you just, it, you can't tell uh, where he is. If you don't see him on the map, it's very possible he's aiming himself right for you. I will say though, our bot laner is doing a lot better job this game. Uh, just right there, just completely avoiding uh, Misfortune's ult. And just doing a good job of pushing them back. Uh, Raptor Arch Claw about to get Trundle here, looks like. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think he is. Trundle is just, for one, is very fast. Although, I think Harold was dropped in mid lane because we just lost our mid current. He, he was. Looks like they're going for the next one as well. All right. It yeah. looks like we might be able to save it, but... Nope. Nope. Not it. Never mind. I had to open my mouth. So that is really an unfortunate loss because now they have but a clear it looks shot. Like we are going to be able to get the bottom turn. Oh, we lost our top turn at some point as well. I missed that. I will say our bot lane is doing significantly better this game. And I've been doing a good job of just kind of forcing the opposing team off of them. Melody in a little bit of trouble yeah, here. Yeah, unfortunately, just not able to hold his own against Trundle anymore. I I think Trundle may have gotten an item or something that allowed him to uh, really bring that back. But uh, really, really close wow. to being able to turn that around. But yeah, even just a minion or two or being close enough to a turret would have made a huge difference there. But unfortunately, not able to make that happen. And Faulkner doing something kind of risky here in going after the dragon while Mordekaiser is out of commission. Well, th we don't have to worry about Trundle coming in to try and help. Well, that's true. Um, and right now, yeah. Oh, and red team winds up yeah. taking the turret. So. We were just able to, uh, it looked, our mid laner was just keeping them off the, was forcing the other team back long enough that... Uh, they weren't able to come in and try and take it. See, this is why Seth is better at commentating on League than I am. <laughs> I've just played the game more. Right. I would. I was. I would honestly say I was worse than you when I first tried commentating this game because I hadn't played enough to have the knowledge to know how. Uh, looks like our mid laner swapping to bot lane to catch that huge wave. So that's gonna be a good amount of gold and XP that he's picking up. He looks like going to come down and try and just stay right there with the opposing mid laner. Try and just essentially force him to not be able to do it then although it has to be really careful right now because the opposing uh jungler is here but able to dash out and keep himself mostly safe although we are going to lose that turn because Trundle is just kind of really really good at taking turns uh Trundle is a split pusher and especially with how fast and strong his basic attacks are He's able to take currents really fast. Now, we do get to see that Morgan Kaiser is very similar, and literally just Zach coming in to try and push him off the current and yeah, barely even affected him. Yeah, he literally just ignored him so that he could take the current. Uh, Zach realizing quickly that like what he was doing was not going to work, so he quickly backed off to just give him the current. Yeah, it was almost like that uh, that meme with the baby where he runs into the hallway and then realizes something is off and then runs right around, decides to oh, escape. Can he, he? Okay, so Mr. One Shot was able to pick up the kill before Trundle came in and got him. And we are able to pick up this next Rift Herald. Right, really so a couple, um, couple things go Faulkner's way. Although Trundle is doing such a good job of just keeping... Uh, 
And Trundle just doing such a good job of pushing wherever we aren't. Uh, kind of forcing our team to recall home to be able to deal with it and push them off. Mr. Gunk able to kind of push them off by himself there for a little bit. Go ahead and going through and cleaning up their vision. You don't want too much of the opposing opponent's vision in your in your area. Right. You know, I think it's quite an indication of how different this game is. You look at the kill count, we're 20 minutes into the game and neither team has gone into double digits. Both teams just playing very clean, very uh, safe defense. Morin Kaiser going in. So the reason the opposing team wasn't doing anything about him is that he had his ult up. Oh, if we can... Okay, double Morin kill. Kaiser able to get the double kill there right before he died. And it looks like Maokai might be able to take out this misfortune. And he does. Really good cleanup there. And so now it looks team, like we're free to get the Baron. Yeah, we are. Uh, Zach is still alive, and he could try and come in and contest the Baron. Uh, but I do think we have enough HP to deal with it. And Mr. One-Shot, if... Okay. Oh, Unfortunately, man. both of, he didn't have any of his dashes. The thing is, we're giving up an inhibitor to get this Baron. Yeah, okay. Our team deciding that it wasn't worth it to try and go for the Baron because we're just... Uh, Trundle's able to come in and just do too much damage. Yeah, that Trundle is just... Trundle is also just such a naturally fast character. It's really hard to do. Could you pull up the items real quick, actually? Yeah, absolutely. I'm trying to figure out if he's just naturally that fast. Yeah, okay, he is. He didn't get, like, Swifties or Moby Boots at all. He's just... Trundle is such a fast character. All right, so Sean is going for the dragon there. here. Able to pick off their uh, support player. Unfortunately, they are able to get the dragon. Mm -hmm. Morning Kaiser really needing to back up, but is able to pull the rest of the opposing team kind of into a trap and just allowing the rest of our team to clap on them. All right, really double good kill double there. kill for the Morning Kaiser. And it looks like Aerie, uh, our mid laner, Mr. One Shot, might be able to come in and. Ah, uh, never mind. I forgot this was Zach. Yeah, Zach. <laughs> He's a slippery but fish. Is able to come in and kind of counter jungle, taking the uh, the raptors away from the opposing jungler. And we are able to come in and clean up one mid lane turn. And we we're at least might it looks like we're gonna at least be able to get some good damage on the second. Yeah, turn. wow. Big chunk of HP comes off turret number two. Really good use of the Rift Herald there. Let's see. Because now we've gone from being really far behind in mid lane to being pretty much even. Oh. That was really close. Airy ba barely able to get out of uh, get out of the way of Trundle. Oh, and looks it looks like, like the they go for Baron here. For Baron right now. But several of our key players are low on health, so here's the question. Can we effectively go after this or not? Oh, they still got it, but can um, Morgan Kaiser come in and clean up a few characters? Able to, able to get a kill on them, but unfortunately they got the shutdown on him. Yeah. So, a mm, little uneven there, but. Yeah, and with Baron, that's, that's not good. This could be really bad for yeah. the Eagles, especially with his, how close they are to the... What? 
doing what we can. Good Let's gracious. See. Yeah, I do not like how close this team is getting to the yeah. interior of our base. Trundle right now is just so tanky as well. You can just take so many hits. And Miss Fortune, just so good at placing her ultimate. Yeah, that's really a credit to the person playing her. He was able to perfectly push off our entire team so we could not defend our current. Basically, Garen, they both cleared out our wave of minions. Uh, so that their minion could go under there. He could go in and take the current fire, no problem. And also, uh... No, the, and also just forcing us off it. Yes, you can see that this other team from Shawnee State has really prioritized taking turrets over lives. And you can see that despite the fact that we've got a five kill advantage over them, they actually have more gold than we do. Mm -hmm. and that does make a difference. That it does. Uh, let's see. Red King's television is destroyed. Let the Morgan Kaiser able to clean up the mid laner there. Raptor Claw in some trouble though. Ooh. Those minions do quite a more, bit more damage than you think they do. Although. Oh, the cavalry comes. Nice. Really good. Uh, really good cleanup there. Very good team fight. And we're ahead on gold again. Just have to be really careful, especially of that trundle. Really, if right now what would be great is if we could go in and pick them off from the rest of the group. Unfortunately, it's just Morgan Kaiser against them right now, which is very unfortunate right there. And that trundle is able to go in and essentially just very quickly kill him. Yeah, it didn't take a whole lot of effort at all, unfortunately. Zaya going ahead and backing to try and uh, cut off this trundle. If we can pick up the kill here on trundle right now, this would be amazing. Right now, it looks like we're, what we have to do is avoid not getting 1v5. Wow, that damage. Trundle just so far ahead. Ooh, that might be game. Uh, actually, I'd say that's almost guaranteed game. Yeah, it's a, it's absolutely Morgan incredible. Back, Morgan Kaiser's back alive right now, but there's just not a ton he can do. Yeah. Penta the, the kill there. For the I don't know that I've ever seen a pencil kill, pencil kill in an, an actual game. I think I've seen it in practice. Yeah, Trundle just absolutely crazy right now already level 18 just dealing so much damage yeah, yeah that's, that's the game, game right there unfortunate but we did really well for most of this game but Trundle just got too far ahead for us to deal with yeah and that's the way it goes sometimes unfortunately uh, it's a shame too because Faulkner actually looking really really good for I would say Early game, you see mm -hmm. Shawnee State taking a little bit of a lead, and then Faulkner just kind of steamrolled for probably a good eight or nine minutes. You start seeing Shawnee State catch up a little bit, and then unfortunately, like you said, once they got Trundle fed to where he was like level 16, level 17, like there, there was just nothing they could do to stop him. Mm -hmm. but, just being, I think he was something like four levels ahead of our next highest level player, so just not a ton we could do. Yeah. Unfortunate, but that's the way that it goes sometimes. So, uh, since our setup is a little unusual, we're probably going to have to just go ahead and call it a night yep. here. Uh, of course, Seth, you'll actually be playing in the game tomorrow. That I will. All right. So, we won't have Daniel, but we will have you. So, mm -hmm. uh, Daniel has oral arguments. He's a law student, so he won't be here, but, but you'll be here.
All right, so with that being said, we're going to go ahead and just let you know about a couple of things we have going on with the broadcast uh, for the rest of the week. So we only actually have one game left, and since we weren't able to secure a victory tonight, it's pretty much guaranteed that we won't be in the playoffs, so that means tomorrow night is going to be the final game of the season more than likely. I mean, I guess technically there's a way that we could wind up in the playoffs, but that seems unlikely at this point. So uh, we probably were just going to have to end it up tomorrow, win or lose, but it'd be really great to go out of the season on a win. Uh, so that's going to be it for us this evening. A let you know about tomorrow night, we've got the broadcast that's going to be at 6 p.m. And then also at 6 p.m., not tomorrow night, but the next Friday, so that's April 21st, we actually have our big live stream that we're doing for charity, and that will be to benefit Operation Underground Railroad, be raising money to help kids that are caught up in sex trafficking right now. So really good cause and going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be doing a lot of zany off-the-wall things just like we did last time. And I don't think we've actually announced this to the public, but I'll go ahead and announce it now. The thing that we're going to be voting on, because of course your donations also buy a vote based on how much you donate, just like last time where we had the costume contest and the winner was decided based on who got the most votes. Uh, our contest this time is you get to vote on how we destroy Jigglypuff. So we will <laughs> be having a Jigglypuff. We've got a giant Jigglypuff uh, stuffed, stuffed animal, and we're going to allow you to vote on how we destroy it, whether it'll be, I think we've got fireworks running over it with a car. Like there's a bunch of different methods that we're going to have to destroy Jigglypuff and you get to pick based <laughs> on how you vote for that. So it'll be a lot of fun. We'll do a lot of goofy fun things, uh, but also some video games as well. I think we're going to be playing Goose Goose Duck and uh, what never, else have we got, Seth? So? Uh, not sure. I've never heard it called Goose Goose Duck. I'll say that. Never yeah, so it. it's it's a game very similar to Among Us. Really? Yeah. I've heard of, I'd say I've heard of Duck Duck Goose. Yeah, it's a completely different game. Completely different game? Okay, just to confirm. Right. I've never heard of Goose Goose Duck, but I'm really interested in that now. Yeah, so we've got um, that. We've got Competitive Tetris, which will be really yes. fun. And uh, I think we've had a few other ideas thrown out, but I don't know if anything else has been 100% decided on. So one of the things we're thinking about, we haven't confirmed this yet, we're going to try to get an episode of the Geek End End. And I haven't picked a topic for that yet, so we'll just have to see. And then we're also going to be doing, what was the other thing? Oh yeah, we've got some video game Who's Line. We're going to do it in a slightly different format than we did last time, and that's partially just to make sure that we've got everything running smoothly, because uh, last time we had some issues with audio, so we've, we've more or less fixed that problem. So uh, we're going to have a lot of real good fun things, and that's going to be Friday, and of course that is to raise money for our under, uh, Operation Underground Railroad. So we're, we're going to go ahead and call it a night there. Thanks so much to Seth for coming in and doing of color course. commentary. Uh, we appreciate you coming in, Seth. Glad to be here. All right. Ho and hopefully I look forward to being able to play tomorrow instead of commentate, though. Yeah, great. and hopefully we'll be able to announce the, the win for tomorrow. That's going to be against mm -hmm. the West Virginia Golden Bears. So uh, we'll be seeing that tomorrow night and look forward to seeing you here. Uh, that'll be 6 p.m. tomorrow, so uh, special thanks to everybody that was helping out with this. Like I said, to my broadcast partner, Seth, uh, and to everybody over at Faulkner Sports Network. We certainly appreciate them. Oh, uh, actually, I do have one other announcement. This isn't even on my notes. I'm just thinking of this off the top of my head. But we're supposed to be launching the eSports store, actually, oh. uh, in a couple days. So be sure to check out our social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, Periscope. Well, Periscope's an old one. That's not actually one we have anymore. Uh, but uh, we're on there. We're on Rumble. We're on Instagram. Like, basically, any social media, Faulkner Esports is there. We got you covered. Anyway, so, you could currently be watching us. Right. <laughs> uh, so we may be able to do that, and we'll be sure to let everybody know what's going on with the Esports store. We'll be able to buy merch. We'll be able to buy hats. We'll be able to buy all kinds of cool stuff. So... Uh, we will let you know about that as soon as we know something. That's going to be it for us this evening. Thanks so much for being with us. Like I said, we'll be back here 6 p.m. tomorrow for more League of Legends against West Virginia Tech. And until that happens, and until that happens, stay the course, friends.
The preceding broadcast was an official presentation of Faulkner University. It may not be redistributed without the express written consent of the Faulkner University Athletic Department. Regitar USA High Res Arena is sponsored by Regitar USA. The national anthem was performed by the Faulkner University Chorus. If you would like to learn more about the Faulkner Esports program, visit our official website at FaulknerEagles.com or follow us on Discord, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram for all the latest news and events. Thank you for watching and soar Eagles.